Good morning. So I just made it to the hostel in Mashhad and I'm just gonna rest for a little bit, edit, and then I'm gonna visit the Holy Shrine. Because Mashhad is the second most religious city in Iran, right after Qom. <sighs> I don't know if I'm completely fucked or not. Okay, I have my documents for Turkmenistan for tomorrow. Tomorrow is 21st of August. At the 21st of August, my visa for Iran expires and I have to be in Turkmenistan. My visa for Turkmenistan starts at the 21st of August, so same day. I got the documents for my visa like a few weeks ago and they told me that with these documents I go to the border between Iran and Turkmenistan and I get my visa there. So it's pretty simple. But now I've been like looking up like travel blogs and and stuff and they say that you go to the Turkmenistan embassy in Mashhad, get your visa there, and then cross the border. Okay, guess what? It's 3 p.m. The embassy or the consulate of Turkmenistan is closed. <laughs> so, I don't know if I really need a visa right now, or if I actually can get it at the border, but all the people who've been traveling here, they say that yeah, like we, we, they went to the consulate where we all had to pick up our visas and fuck man, I'm, I have no fucking idea what I should do, like, anyways, I'm gonna visit the shrine now, hope it's nice. <laughs> So a few hours passed and I visited the shrine but I couldn't take my camera with me so I had to leave my bag outside so I only had my phone and I tried to capture a few impressions. The shrine or the mausoleum is huge and it's also a mosque and the whole complex is apparently the biggest complex. It's even bigger than Mecca apparently. The shrine is for Imam Riza who was a descendant of the Prophet Muhammad. And every year there are 20 million people visiting the shrine and his tomb, or the tombstone. Well, walking around there was quite interesting. It was also a little bit bizarre. Like, you had people who went there to pray, and then there were like kids running around screaming, and it was just, yeah, it was a little bit bizarre. <laughs> But yeah, it's very impressive. So after the shrine, I went to exchange some money for Turkmenistan because in Turkmenistan I need the US dollar and I don't have that much US dollar with me. So I exchanged a few more euros. Yeah, I think tomorrow morning I will just try to get to the border as fast as possible, try to get into Turkmenistan. And if, if not, then uh, I just really hope it works out tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, and the best thing, I found peanut butter. <laughs> I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of peanut butter, but having peanut butter and banana and a slice of bread, that's awesome. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. <laughs> much needed. <laughs> All right. So now I will eat, and then I will edit, and then sleep, and then wake up early tomorrow morning. It's 6 a.m. in the morning. Let's go to Turkmenistan, or at least try to. <laughs> this is the master plan for today. So this is how it works. I have to take the bus from the hostel to another bus station. I just did that. And from there, I walk to another bus station. From there, I take another bus to the... It's not a main bus station, it's like a... Well, it's, it's kind of it's one of the main bus stations. From there, I can take an intercity bus to a town called Kuchan. And from there, I take a taxi. I have to take a taxi to some kind of square. From that square, I have to take 
a share taxi to the border, to the border between Iran and Turkmenistan. After that, I cross the border if I get in, and from then, I don't know yet. Maybe take a share taxi or something. Let's see. Anyways, I'm about 230 kilometers away from the border. It's a beautiful day. Let's do it. <laughs> now I have to find bus number 26. And especially for public transportation, like such as buses, it's pretty good to know the numbers in Farshan. Like, they use different numbers. They don't use the Arabic ones. So it's good to know how the numbers look like. So I made it. I'm just gonna take this bus all the way until the end, until I get to this bigger bus station. And now I made it to the big bus terminal, and now I only have to buy a ticket to Kuchan. <laughs> Should be easy. <laughs> so it wasn't that easy, but I made it. It's uh, 11 a.m. now, so five hours passed, and I'm already at the city, or at the village, at the border. Everything went extremely smoothly. Like, uh, I went to this big bus terminal, and then I got on a bus to Kichan, and from there I just took another like private car to the um, to some square, and from there I had a, already a like, shared taxi to the border town. So yeah, all pretty quick, uh, five hours. And that was for like 230 kilometers and it cost about 4 euros. So yeah, now I just only have to cross the border and get into Turkmenistan. The thing is, if I don't get into Turkmenistan, I just realized that I probably will be stuck between Iran and Turkmenistan because I cannot go back. Oh, maybe I can, but my visa for Iran is, I have only one entry, so yeah, let's see. Oh, and the landscape was pretty amazing again. Okay, so yeah, let's go and cross the border to Turkmenistan. <laughs> That's the border entrance over there. Actually, my biggest hope is to meet a few travelers at the border, but I can't get my hopes too high, up too high, because there are not many people visiting Turkmenistan. Apparently, every year, only like a few thousands. Apparently only 3,000 people. I mean, the reason I want to meet fellow travelers is just so we can share like a cab to Ashgabat and things like that and maybe share a hotel room because otherwise it's going to be really expensive and I don't really know if I can if I have enough money to be honest. That's my biggest fear actually right now. <laughs> and my MasterCard doesn't work in Turkmenistan as well. I should have done more research. But yeah, next time. <laughs> Let's first cross the border.